giving you a voice, making it loud our own way. Welcome, Welcome to, to the fun. fun. First updates now, FRC is produced in partnership with the Blue Alliance. Keep up to date on all live and archive first robotics events and team stats at thebluealliance.com. And by viewers like you. We need your help to keep fun loud, live, and independent. Help us by visiting our Patreon to pledge your support at patreon.com forward slash first updates now. You can also support fun live on Twitch for a few bucks a month or by linking your Prime account for free and clicking subscribe. Good evening, everyone in the fun universe, and welcome to the FRC Southern Fried, or as we're going to be calling ourselves very shortly, the Sweet Tea Region Recap. <laughs> My name is John Fogarty. I'm an alumni of FRC Team 1102, and uh, luckily this past year I actually got the chance to uh, become the head coach of the program, and uh, I'm going to be one of your hosts this evening. I'm Kristen Chong. I'm uh, with FRC 2655. And I'm Griffin. And I'm Griffin Connor, and I'm with Team 6334. So tonight we're going to be giving our takes on the events coming up later this week. As I give you a little preview, and then we're going to give it a little bit of discussion on uh, some of the things that we think have been interesting going on in the community uh, this uh, coming up. Um, so to start things off tonight, uh, I'm going to be covering uh, the Gainesville di District event from the Peachtree District. Um, the event's going to be pretty interesting. Uh, we've got some teams coming into the event from uh, the New England District, North Carolina District, and the Indiana District as outsiders. Uh, teams uh, like 166 Chop Shop, uh, 2655 Platypi, the Flying Platypi from North Carolina, uh, 4795 as well from North Carolina. Then teams from Indiana, 40, 1747, uh, and teams 3494 are also going to be coming in from Indiana. So uh, some of the teams to watch, um, I don't have a ton of information on team-specific designs yet because a lot of teams haven't put out reveals. So uh, teams that I think you should probably pay a lot of attention to just based on historical performance as a baseline would be 166 Chop Shop, 832 Oscar, a team that typically seeds the top eight at most events they went to. Uh, my team, 1102, uh, we've been doing pretty well this past season, and we hope to continue that this coming year. Uh, team 1414 IHOT, uh, you actually, uh, they did reveal their robot, which is uh, a pretty interesting design. Uh, they've got an overroller intake for picking up the, uh, the cargo balls, and uh, a pretty simple hatch intake manipulator. And they also have a pretty awesome climber that they uh, they really think uh, is quick, simple, and they'll get them onto the platform with relative ease. Um, other teams like 1648 G3 Robotics, they chose an interesting design path this year. Uh, they went for the, the low cargo ship uh, and low rocket design. Um, I don't believe that that design has a way to get onto the level three platform, but I bet it probably could get onto the level two, um, which is an interesting choice for them considering last season uh, in the district, they were one of the best, if not these, the best um, teams for getting uh, cubes onto the uh, scale because they had a really solid elevator design that was faster than almost everyone's. So it's interesting to see that they've chosen this year to strategize focusing more on the cargo ship. Uh, other teams like 1746 Auto, uh, 1747 Harrison Boiler, uh, we're also gonna get to see one of the Einstein finalists last year with uh, 2655, the Platypie, like I said. Uh, I haven't seen much of what their final robot design looks like, but uh, a couple of weeks ago they did reveal how their hatch manipulator works, which if that's the final design that they chose to go with, they'll probably be one of the best and fastest teams at moving hatches around the field. Yeah, actually, um, that is the, the final design. There are a couple more tweaks uh, compared to the one that we released. Uh, I think it was in week three. Um, but yeah, that is the final design. And uh, 
It should be good. Yeah. I hope. Uh, <laughs> a couple other teams uh, to watch out for. Uh, 3998 Redneck Robotics uh, was a good team last year. Uh, another one of the scale capable robots. I wonder if they've continued with that theme and built another elevator design. Uh, 4188 Columbus Space Program has been historically pretty uh, successful in our district. 4189 The Chargers, another team that typically comes out with an interesting uh, design uh, that's pretty non conventional. Uh, at least that was the case last season. And then last but not least of all is Team 67 Ho 5, who, in my opinion, at last year's Gainesville competition was probably the most prepared team out of almost anyone. They had looked to me like they had spent the most time practicing before the event, and they could be, again, one of the favorites to win the event if they did the same this year. So the next question really is going to be about how the game is going to play out in Gainesville. Um, Georgia teams are not tip or the Peachtree district teams are not really known for having the strongest autonomous modes, especially this early on in the season. So I think a lot of teams are probably going to err on the side of using cameras for the hybrid sandstorm mode. Uh, And so that's what I predict could be the case. Uh, We'll have to see what happens. Uh, Another question mark in my mind for the event coming up is, Are we going to see more cargo specialist robots for this district event? Or are we going to see more uh, rocket challenging teams? So it's going to be honestly a really unique thing. It's going to be a really interesting thing to check out and see which which strategy was favored. Uh, I'm currently really interested because my team, 1102, really chose to focus on the rocket And I want to know how many times are we going to see the rocket completed at this event compared to others. Um, As a practice run on Saturday, we went up to the Atlanta Destination Einstein Field, which is a program that exists unique to Georgia, where we have four fields for teams to go practice on. Uh, Our team was competing, completing like most of the hatches and a few balls, but we weren't fast enough quite yet to finish the rocket ourselves. So it'll be interesting to see with a partner working with us how or if we'll be able to complete the rocket. And as far as level three climbers, I'm not honestly sure at this point how many we're going to have. I know for a fact 832 Oscar has a climber in the works. 1414 has shown theirs. And 1102, my team, of course, has shown ours. So it'll be interesting to see who else will have that level three climb to almost guarantee themselves a, uh, a ranking point in that regard if the other team can at least get onto the level one platform. So next, what are you looking forward to seeing in Palmetto, Kristen? I will throw the note out uh, back to Gainesville. There, if y'all notice, there's a ton of of out-of-district teams at this event, and I have a feeling that's probably because by the time third plays signups opened up, this was the only open event, and it was still waitlisted. So I think Chesapeake didn't really have anything open. Um, But moving on to Palmetto, there are a couple teams you probably want to look out for. 3402 Burning Magnetos. Uh, they released some of their reveal video earlier. Um, 263 Aftershock, they're in from uh, New York. Uh, I don't have any images to show on stream, but they do have some images up on the Blue Alliance. Um, 1369 Minotaur. I've actually been talking with one of their mentors back and forth throughout the whole build season. Um, and their hatch slash cargo intake is going to be really cool to watch they've got kind of a dual it's the it's it's all in one intake they're using wheels for both um and it was one of the more elegant ones that i've seen that handles both with the same intake 2614 mars the hall of fame team from 2017 um they're going to be at palmetto so they'll be a team to watch 5949 tech garage just released their reveal video yesterday um so that'll be one you maybe want to go take a look at 6902 Exploding Bacon and 900 The Zebra Corns uh, will also be there. Now, I have a feeling 1902 might be a team you want to watch auto-wise. Last year, they finished the the season with a three-cube auto that was actually quite successful. Um, And I talked to them in Houston about some of the analog devices I am used and some of the new offerings that came out. Um, So I have a feeling they're going to be using one of the newer sensors. which means probably a little more accuracy. So we'll see how that plays out. 
Um, I have a feeling for the rest of the event, you're probably going to see, again, like like John mentioned, a lot of fly-by-wire uh, a camera driving in Sandstorm. Um, but as far as level three, we'll see what happens with uh, what happens with the HAB. Yeah, so. and uh, there's a couple more teams from uh, South Carolina you probably should keep your eyes on as well. Uh, being them from there originally, uh, teams that always are pretty successful pretty early on are teams like 1876 Beach Botics. Uh, I always see them top top four almost every year at Palmetto. Um, 343 has an interesting approach. They released their video, uh, and they've been historically a team to pay attention to. And then you cannot forget everybody's favorite teams from the garage up in the Greenville Lawrence area, team 4451 and 6366, uh, uh, Robots Garage and Ramrods Robotics. They always produce some pretty solid designs and it'll be interesting to see what they come out with this year. So how's CHS going on, Griffin? Honestly, I think it's gonna go really well. So for, in week one, so for, as opposed to what a lot of districts do, uh, week one is usually very, very competitive because all the high-ranking teams go to a week one event. So starting off in Richmond, uh, there's going to be o- almost every single big dog in the su- southern portion of Chesapeake here. Teams like 346, 422, 1086, 1610, 6334, and 6802 are all going to the event. All of them have shown great, or great stuff and... Uh, just in the past and some have even shown good stuff for this year now my sleeper pick for this year or i'm gonna what i'm gonna do is for every event i cover i will do a sleeper pick and my sleeper pick is going to be the rookie 7429 convergence the reason why is because i've seen their robot and that robot is very very interesting like i'm surprised a rookie team was able to do some of the stuff they were able to do it just shows the work and the effort that they were able to put in. Now, for gameplay-wise at this event, CHS is normally a... Like, we don't value more of our robots, more of our drivers. And the drivers are what powers, like, some of the big powerhouse uh, teams. So I don't. I think during the Sandstorm, we will less. there will be less autonomouses and more just good driving with vision. Now, it, going north, three and a half hours, it should really be three, but it's three and a half because of traffic. <laughs> uh, you'll be headed to the Hay- Haymarket event, hosted by Team 1885 Eyelet Robotics, though they will not be competing in the event. But te- other teams to watch out for are 623 Oakton Cougar Robotics, 1629 Garrett Coalition, 1418 Vey Victus, 1731 Fresta Valley Robotics, 2363 Triple Helix, and the out of district team, 316 Lunatex. Now my sleeper pick for this is 5549 Griffin Robotics. Now Griffin Robotics, uh, their reveal video was shown actually during the big, the big uh, reveal night uh, here on First Night That's Now. And honestly, I was impressed by the robot. They're a team that has been steadily growing over the past few years. And so I'd say 2017 they got the their organization down. 2018 they got organization and showed that they can build a decent robot and from this year i think that they finally got the robot nailed down to where they can be highly competitive now the gameplay here will be slightly different than it was in the southern and uh richmond most likely because a lot of the teams i'm seeing at this event are running mechanum drive so that can see a lot of defense screw some stuff up because that just becomes a push and you're out of position yeah, it's Cannon's definitely going to be interesting. <laughs> it, it's going to be interesting. There's been a pretty big discussion on Chief Delphi about this, and that's pretty much the next thing I wanted to really bring up. Is uh, And I, I actually want to get Twitch chat's input on this subject as well. What, what do you guys really think the defense is going to be like in this game? Uh, it's probably one of the hotter topics on Chief right now about how is defense going to either enhance this game or ruin the game in some people's minds. Uh one of the points that I noticed today, and I've been looking into a bit more, and I probably should have noticed it a lot sooner, to be fair with you, um, is that their sight lines on this field are pretty hard to uh, see fully across the field if you're diagonal 
from the rocket from left to right. So if a defensive robot is in a corner driver station as opposed to the middle one, my opinion is that because of the rules and how they're written where you can't actually like step over to another driver station if you had a longer cable, um, you, you have to you have your sight lines where you're situated and you don't have a whole lot of way to see the robot other than utilizing the camera if you have a shorter robot. So what do you guys think defense is going to do to gameplay this week? I honestly, oh, go ahead. I honestly think that certain in certain aspects, so defense is definitely going to play a big part, especially in this level to where there's the teams that necessarily can't do a lot, so they just go play defense. But I think the counterplay then is just to, uh, so you say have one, there's, you said that there's the problem with vision. Okay, have the edge have the two people on the edge stay on their side and then have the middle guy go wherever the defender bot isn't. That's yeah. my take on it. I see a lot of people in chat talking about standing in front of the rocket. Um, while I agree, I think that's definitely gonna be a big defensive strategy in the qualification rounds. I think that will shift once you move to eliminations. I think Karthik mentioned this a couple episodes back. Um, there is no bonus points for completing a rocket once you hit quals. So I think you're going to see the game meta change just slightly once you move into um, once you move into the playoff rounds. Um, essentially, if you can only score low, you can play a good portion of the game and, and be a solid contributor even in those elimination matches. Yeah, I'm not I'm not super sure about it. Um, I Maybe def- Elims will have reduced defense. I'm not 100% sure yet. Um, I actually do see some people in chat agreeing with that sentiment. That would be a bit of a reversal from what I've seen in previous seasons. Uh, defense typically played a larger role in eliminations versus playoffs, and or eliminations versus qualification rounds. Um, so it'll be interesting to see one versus the other, uh, how teams choose to play the game. Uh, if you're asking me, I'm probably going to say that I think teams would probably play more offense in a qualifying round because, I mean, if you're not certain you're going to be the number one seed, you want to at least impress them in such a way that they think that they can win with your help. So it's going to be really – and, of course, teams like mine really – our strategies are built to try and seed within the top four. Um, it's been that way for – 16 years now and some years were much more successful at it than others um but um it, it's going to be interesting to see how the gameplay shifts from qualifications to playoffs yeah my team has a similar mindset for like trying to get to the secure your spot in the top eight because in addition in the district model you have to get as many points as you can to like move to move on so the way you secure that easily is get in the top eight, get in the top four, and move on through elims. And that's best kept at captain's position where you immediately guarantee yourself a lot of points. Yeah. So another thing I wanted to ask you guys and chat as well if you're interested to give us your opinions. What Southeastern team reveal videos have you seen that you really liked? If you're going to ask me my favorite... I feel like I had the exact same answer this last year that I'm going to have this year. I love Children of the Swamp's reveal videos. I feel like they're probably one of the best teams in the Southeast when it comes to just pushing out a polished robot. Um, The the design that they have is, I think, in some ways similar to ours uh, at 1102. Maybe they don't have the flip-back component that we do, but um, the, the design overall is probably one of the best that I've seen out of the southeastern region of the United States, and uh, I expect to see them go very far this year. Um, I, I haven't seen a ton of others because I, I feel like a lot of teams are either being secretive this year or it's more along the lines of with the more complexity involved with um, the multiple game pieces, teams aren't quite ready to release what they have. So, um, what videos have you guys seen that you really enjoyed? Uh, another spam. team, spam. Yeah, go right ahead. I I actually I don't I actually haven't seen that video yet. I've been meaning to, but I haven't been able to see it. Yeah, um, if you were to watch premiere night, you'd see it. Oh, I no, watched. I, I got to watch a lot of it, but then I had to go. So spam has definitely got a really interesting design. Um, I've seen it. 
premiere night was pretty awesome to get to take the chance to look at their designs. Um, Spam always puts out some pretty quality robots, and their scouting system is uh, really interesting to utilize as well. Uh, my team going into Gainesville will be utilizing the uh, poor man scouting system because we don't have the numbers to be able to uh, produce our own scouting system within the time before a week one event. So the help that they give teams by putting that out is pretty uh, pretty immense. Uh, and I think that their robot design uh, is very good as per the usual for them. Uh, it's interesting to see them go with it, the elevator design this year when I feel like they really love their shooter designs as, as showcased by last season. So uh, it'll be interesting to see uh, how that pans out for them throughout the course of the season. Now, a reveal video for me that I saw was from 384 Sparky. Now, Sparky is generally considered like one of the best teams in Virginia. And they won 2017 district championship and 2018 district championship and won Curie in uh, 2017. Now, I was honestly underwhelmed by this. Like their video showed a robot that was a that seemed to be a low scoring cargo only robot and could climb the Hab three. And to me, I don't. I was just under under impressed by it, and I I don't know what was going on i don't know i don't know if they have another design plan involved but it's just and other people felt this uh, on discord but it was just underwhelming for them like i they might be planning to play more defense and that might actually be very very powerful with it because they're very good drivers in the first place so if they're able to nail that down and then nail down anything they might still be the great team that they are but at this moment, since they're a cargo-only robot from the looks of it, this is not necess- This might not be a good year for them. Yeah, it'll be interesting to see how it pans out for them. I've definitely seen a few things where some teams have one design versus another design compared to last year. What do you think, Kristen? All I have to say is I wish I had thought of what Children of the Swamp did for their climb versus what we tried to do. Because yeah. our robot jumps a foot in the air, and I think the other hosts have seen it. I don't know if we want to share it, because it was terrifying. Um, <laughs> but yeah, I'm I'm shocked I haven't seen more reveal videos. Although, I guess, given the game challenges this year, a lot of teams seem to be, I guess, further behind in the design process than they normally are. Um, so it, it kind of makes sense, and it's this is definitely going to be one of those years where you're going to see a very different robot in week one versus week six. Yeah, Maryland definitely is. Maryland definitely got hit hard in the de- in like design process because they had so many snow days. So all yeah. the school based teams just got, uh, I think, about at least a week's worth of time taken out. Yeah, those snow days can definitely hit you pretty hard. Uh, luckily, down here in Georgia, I think for the most part, not a single team that I'm aware of lost much, if not. I think they may have lost a day or two when snow pretended to come to Atlanta, but it, 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 it didn't actually happen. So uh, it, luckily we don't have to face challenges like that uh, in our area. But um, that's uh, all we have really for you guys tonight, uh, covering for the Southeastern region. I want to thank everyone who's uh, here tonight watching. And if you'd like to check out more First Robotics in your life and you like what we do, all that we let you, all that we ask is that you – let others know about our show and that this is the place to go for more FRC content. If you've got a few bucks to share through bits, donations, or even a subscription, we'd really appreciate it. But if not, we totally understand and we're delighted to have you on board. On behalf of myself, Christian, Griffin, and of course, our wizard of a producer, Tyler, I'd like to thank you all for tuning in and thank you again to all of our moderators in the chat. Our next show coming up is Infimidation, first in Michigan. And we'll talk to you again next week on the FRC Sweet Tea Region Recap. Bye. Thank you to all of our co-executive producers keeping fun loud, live, and independent. Pledge your support at patreon.com forward slash first updates now.